Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I want to welcome everyone to worship, those down below, those up high, and those watching online. I'm Pastor Reed Lee Peterson, um, and I'm glad you've come here to worship God on another beautiful, beautiful day that God has made for us. Uh, we are going to start with confession and forgiveness, so I invite everyone to please rise as we do so. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. At first, I leave a moment of silence for us to confess our own sins we'd like to bring forward today. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us join together with our gathering hymn 796, How Firm a Foundation.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We continue with our Kyrie. Have mercy on us, Lord. Teach us, good Lord God, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and to not ask for reward, except that of knowing that we do your will, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. We'll continue with the readings. A reading from Jeremiah. O oh Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have empowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I must cry out. I must shout, violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has, come be, has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him, 
or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whisperings. Terror is all around. Denounce him. Let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed, and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble, and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their internal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the hearts and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them. For to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of evildoers. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We will read Psalm 69 responsibly. Surely for your sake I have suffered reproach and shame has covered my face. I have Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I humble myself with fasting, but that has turned to my reproach. I put on sackcloth also and became a byword among them. But as for me, this is my prayer to you at the time you have set, O Lord. In your great mercy, O God, answer me with your unfailing help. Save me from the mire. Do not let me sink. Let me be rescued from those who hate me and out of the deep waters. Let not the torrents of water wash over me, neither let the deep swallow me up. Do not let the pit shut its mouth upon me. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. A reading from Romans. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that this old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is free from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him we know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Word of God, word of life. Thanks. I want to invite any children that might want to come forward. Ezekiel, you want to come up? Oh, he just ducked. Like I can't see him. Ooh, just take a seat here. Even the older children, as old as 96, you know, we take them to come here. 
Hey, big guy. Oh. Hey. Hey, guys. It's okay. Um, I know we got one more coming up. My big question for all of us today is, what's the most expensive thing you own? What do you think is the most expensive thing that you or your family owns? Your house. Can anybody top that? Car. Especially the, the nicer the car. They get pretty expensive. What are some other expensive things? Maybe you don't own, but just really, really expensive things. Electronics, yeah. Anybody trying to get a new phone these days? That's $1,000 right there. Yeah, that's not cheap. Yeah. You know, you may not know this, but um, as, a, as a church, we get insurance so that if anything breaks, we can have, we, we kind of pay some money so that we can have money to help fix that. And if one of these windows were to break, that would be very, very expensive. Maybe even ex- more expensive than some of our houses. That expensive. In fact, at the church I was at before, we had, uh, I think it was six windows on each side, and each window was insured for $1 million. Meaning it was going to cost a $1 million if one of those broke to replace it. Luckily, none of them broke. We lucked out on that. But we think of all these really expensive things, or maybe, what about a plane? Or if you bought your own boat? Or, you know, yeah, those are pretty, pretty expensive. We have all of these expensive things, and yet, Jesus, in our gospel reading, he's going to tell us, you know, you see those sparrows over there? God takes care of them. God loves them. And even, did you know that God knows how many hairs are on your head? You ever tried to count them before? I think I'd be the easiest one of us here to count. But even then, it'd take a while, right? There's a lot of hair on our heads. And God thinks you're precious enough to actually know how many hairs are on your head. So the point I'm trying to get to is we have all this expensive stuff. Jumbo jet, our houses, our phones, maybe a PS5 or a Nintendo Switch. But of all those things, God thinks we're more precious than all of them. Yes, you bet. So God always thinks we're more precious than anything else in this world. And that's something we can know. Hey, you know what? God loves me and God thinks I'm precious. And that's a good thing to know. So how about we say a prayer and put your hands together? Dear God, I thank you for valuing me, for thinking I'm precious. Help me go out into this world knowing that I am valued, loved, and called to value and love others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up, guys. All right, go back to mom. I now invite the assembly to rise as we greet the gospel in acclamation. According to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they've called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So we have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up. 
that will not be uncovered and nothing secret that will not become known. For what I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you whisper, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can, be, who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny, yet one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father? And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than those sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think I have come to bring peace to the earth. Have not come, I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. You know, when I first read our texts for today, I did not walk away with a nice, warm feeling about following Jesus. I may or may not have verbally gasped and went, jeesh. We start with this text from Jeremiah where he's going, you know, God, you enticed me. You're, you're holy and you're good and you told me to go tell these people, your followers, hey, you're doing the wrong things and now they're trying to harm me for it. In our psalm, the psalmist is saying, God, I, I got really into you. And people behind my back are saying I'm weird. Even my friends and my family. In Romans, we get the bad news that, you know, Jesus Christ did die for the sins of the world. But that doesn't mean that if we go and sin doubly that we're we're helping Jesus because that means his forgiveness is that much more important. No, we're not supposed to keep sinning. Instead, we're supposed to live in a newness of life. We're supposed to live and try to be better human beings in this world on behalf of Jesus. And then our Matthew text, we get this talk of division against father and son, mother and daughter, daughter daughter-in-law and mother-in-law. This talk of not peace, but a sword. But through it all, there's a bigger point trying to be made. And it comes, I think, in the form of a question. Who do you serve? If you're in trouble, whether it's financial, maybe health, perhaps well-being, car trouble, garage door trouble, water softener trouble, plumbing trouble, who do you go to first? Martin Luther wrote two catechisms, one small, one big, or large. Perhaps a few of us here have learned the small one. Maybe even we're forced to memorize the small one. Maybe even we're forced to come and recite this small catechism in front of everyone here at church. I won't be forcing our confirmants to do that anymore, if they had in the past. The small one was meant for the family home, but the large one, Martin Luther wrote for the pastors because he went around Germany and he noticed all these pastors don't know what the heck they're talking about. They're spewing stuff that's wrong, unintelligent, and sometimes even heretical. So he, he wrote this large catechism and said, hey, follow this stuff, read this stuff, and stop going on your own. Learn this. Well, in that large catechism... When Martin Luther's writing about the the first commandment, you shall have no other gods, kind of a big point coming today, his first line is this in explaining the purpose and what it means to not follow any other gods. 
God is that in which we are to look for all good and in which we are to find refuge in all need. Therefore, to have a God is nothing else than to trust and believe in that one with your whole heart. He points out a simple truth. Faith in God, big G, and faith in God, little g, or an idol, exist in a very similar space. Where do you put your trust? Where do you put your faith in? So with that in mind, who or what in your life is your God? Is it the Almighty? Or could it actually be someone or something else? For context today in our gospel, Jesus is speaking to his Jewish disciples and he's letting them know there is going to be some division. He also makes it clear the division is going to be because of me. I'm going to be the cause of the division and he comes not to bring peace but a sword. Sword being a kind of an item representing division. So is Jesus saying... Hey, sons and fathers, hey, mothers and daughters, hey, all in-laws, you better start sharpening your blades for the bloodbath that is following Jesus Christ, the supposed Prince of Peace? No. What he's trying to tell them is there's about to be a split in the Jewish community over those who believe I am the Messiah and those who do not. Jesus is readying his disciples to remember to put his life-saving work above that of their family ties. So how are we supposed to read a text like that today? Remember, God loves you. God values you. God actually values, values you so much that God has counted the very hairs on your head no matter how few or large that number may be. God takes care of the birds of the air. God takes care of the flowers of the field. God takes care of all, the entire world. And yet God claims love for us humans above it all. That's why God gave us stewardship over them. God's love for each and every one of you, for all of us here is so great that the Father sent His Son to die for our sake, so that everyone of the entire world could be saved. So when we're thinking of family ties, think about this. Did it matter to Jesus who your father, mother, sister, brother, or in-laws are or were when He let Himself die on the cross? Did it matter who you knew? You may not know this, but I went to Warburg College. Uh, my wife and I just got our Warburg plates, just so people know that we went to Warburg College. Um, and when I was getting ready for Warburg College, my brother was actually already there. So I got to say, hey, he's my brother. And they went, hey, here's some money to help pay for college. I went, thank you. Now, Adam was the first one of our family to go to Warburg College, so he couldn't say, hey, I have family there. But his buddy's father went to Warburg and he said, hey, I know that guy. And Warburg went, that's great. Here's some money to help pay for college. It helped who he knew and who I knew. My mom, for many years of my life, was a town magistrate in Greene County, which was helpful for me because the handful of traffic violations that I was pulled over for in town, handful, not too many, whether it was rolling through a stop sign or maybe turning, uh, realizing I missed my stop and stopping really hard and turning fast. They'd come up to the door, I'd give them my idea, ID, they'd look at it once, they'd turn to me and go, wait, are you Rita's boy? And I'd go, yeah. And they'd go, drive safe, I'm telling your mother tomorrow. <laughs> Quick aside, I had a buddy whose dad was a state trooper he got caught going 20 miles over on a highway 
To which the state trooper said a similar thing, and he said, can I please have the ticket instead? <laughs> but imagine if my mom wasn't the magistrate when I got caught rolling through a stop sign. Imagine if my mom was maybe someone that the police had a negative relationship with. And they thought, you know what? On a regular person, I might let them go, but they're probably going to be just like their mother or father, so we might as well get them started in the system already. Let's check their car, see what's going on here. Sometimes who you know makes a difference in this world. But that at the end of our lives, whether you picture a courtroom drama where God's the judge and Jesus is deciding whether or not he wants to defend you, or my preferred analogy, a hospital wing, where you're riddled with death and sin, and Jesus, the physician, is there with a shot of his gracefulness and eternal life and truth. Please know it won't matter to Jesus who our relations were, whether or not he chooses to defend us or heal us or die for us. It won't matter to Jesus who our relations were because Jesus' death for our sake was done with unbounding, abounding, unconditional love. So as people of God, we are united with Jesus in a death like his because his death was for us. That death he died was out of unconditional and unfailing love, so unfailing that it even conquered death itself. And as Paul reminds us through his letters to, wrote to the Romans, for if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. This kind of love, this unconditional, unfailing love, it's the one we're meant to receive from God, and it's the one we're meant to share with the world. It is the love we can most easily practice with our family and loved ones, parents, kids, siblings. But we do not have to limit ourselves to who we give it to. It is a love for everyone. So I want to finish with a scenario to kind of explain what that division looks like that Jesus is talking about. Imagine one of the disciples comes back to their father and says, you know, I followed Jesus, he died, he rose again, and now I'm a follower of the way, Dad, and I want you to know that Jesus doesn't just love me, Jesus loves you too. Father looks at his son and goes, you've strayed, you've gone away. No, don't, don't fall for that way stuff. We're Jewish, son, you've got to stay one of us. I'm not sure I can love you anymore if you can't be one of us. To which the son says, well, I'm really sorry, God, but I'm really sorry, Dad, but I love Jesus first and foremost. And what he does, has done for me is so good. And did you hear me say that Jesus loves you too? The father says, it's too much. I got to let you go. And that division scenario, who broke away from who? The sword that we swing is not one to attack others, to harm others, to hurt others. It's the love of Jesus for us and for all people. It's an active faith life in that love of Jesus, sharing it with others. And if other people don't like that, we're not the ones letting them go. They end up being the ones letting us go. Strictly because we believe in the love of God for us and for them. So let us follow that love of God, which will always love us. Let us embrace living in a resurrection that seeks to do what is right. And let us never forget that when we stumble, there's forgiveness for that. Amen. I now invite the assembly to rise as we continue with our hymn of the day. Will you come and follow me? Please rise.
With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God the Father, almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in need, responding to God in your mercy with hear our prayer. You entice your church to speak truth that challenges false notions of peace. Prevail on us with the good news of Christ's death and resurrection that we are compelled to share the gospel with all the world. God, in your mercy. Under your watch, not even a sparrow goes unnoticed. Safeguard plant and animal habitats threatened by melting glaciers, rising oceans, and receding coastlines. Amplify voices for calling for responsible stewardship of the earth's resources. God, in your mercy. Our world is enduring violence and destruction. Rescue your people and nations experiencing conflict of crisis, especially we lift up Ukraine and those in our hearts now. Thwart the efforts of those who sow chaos and terror and guide those working to bring about peace and reconciliation. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have counted even the hairs of our heads. Reassure anyone experiencing poverty, homelessness, unemployment, or exploitation that every life has value. Look favorably upon all who struggle, especially those we name in our hearts or aloud now. Answer us for your steadfast love is good. God, in your mercy, in our prayer. All who have died in Christ also live with him. We give thanks for Harold Wente and all the saints who faithful confession inspired our own discipleship and raise us with them to eternal life. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. All God's people said, Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. I invite us to share that peace with one another. Those online, God's peace be with you. Oh, peace, Steve. Peace, Mary. Good to see you. Peace be with you. God's peace. Peace be with you. God's peace be with you. God's peace. Good to see you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Monty. Peace be with you. God's peace be with you. Peace be with you, Jim. Peace, Jim. We now continue with the offering.
Please rise for the offering song. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might for the worlds, so that we might be for the world, be for the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and light, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Stand high in the highest, blessed is he. Indeed, holy, almighty, and merciful God, you are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill us for your holy will and accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And we can go to the next slide. Ooh. Uh, we will skip the sung responses today. Uh, and I will say, for as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again, garnered with that mystery of faith, gathered together by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. 
Uh, for communion today, we do so by intention, so you can come forward. The ushers will do their best to get you in the right direction. Uh, receive the wafer, and you can dip it either in the red liquid, which is wine, or the clear, clear yellowish liquid, which is grape juice. If you believe Jesus Christ is present here today and in this meal, please come to this open table and receive his goodness. Uh, if you maybe haven't had First Communion training or are uncomfortable with that, you can cross your arms and receive a blessing in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. With that being said, come to the banquet, for all is now ready.
Let us pray. <clears throat> we give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A uh, few announcements. A uh, big one being with name tags. The Stewardship Committee has been on it. Uh, and we have actual magnetic boards uh, at all the uh, exits. So, as you're departing, before you head out the door, stick it on there so it's nice and handy. Whatever doorway you come in uh, next Sunday, it'll be right there waiting for you. Um, so I believe it's, uh, you'll see these, these magnetic whiteboards on the two south. Wait, that's not south. It is south. <laughs> Woo! Uh, uh, on the two south doors, you'll see a magnetic kind of a white board. Feel free to put your name tag on there. Uh, in the hallway here, you'll see kind of a bigger one against the wall uh, by the coat hangers. Feel free to hang it up on there if you normally come from the north door. But please do that. Did you have an announcement, bud? <laughs> Mom wants church to get over. Okay, okay. Um... Are there any other announcements anyone wanted to lift up at this time? I want to give a special shout out and thanks for all those who went to Willow Winds. It looked like a heck of a time. I'm sorry I couldn't join you, so I'm just so glad we do that. I know Megan is looking forward to maybe being able to be a part of that too. It just looks like a great opportunity. Well, with that being said, we're going to finish with the blessing, okay, bud? So we, can you ask them to rise? We'll try it. Please rise. All right, put your arm up. All right, put your arm up like this. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. We finish with our sending hymn, If You But Trust in God to Guide You, hymn 769. Go in peace. Christ is with you.